Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and yesterday SpaceX and T-Mobile announced that they were going to pair up to allow you to use your cell phone in the future with orbiting Starlink satellites and they say this might mean the end of dead zones and I thought we might take a look at this announcement and what it's all about and what is possible using just a phone and a satellite orbiting overhead. Now I covered this topic once before on the channel and you can find that linked on screen here. This is one of the few times that my predictions about future technologies have actually been correct. So if you wanted to see what I was thinking about when we talked about this last around May or so, uh, check out the video linked there. Now yesterday, kind of out of the blue, uh, SpaceX CEO Elon Musk along with Mike Sievert, who is the head of T-Mobile, got together at Starbase in Texas, where they are developing the new SpaceX Starship rocket. Now, one of the things that Musk announced at this event yesterday is that SpaceX is in the process of developing a version two Starlink satellite. And those satellites, which are much larger than the existing ones, will be required for this new cell phone service to work. And they're also going to have to put on very large antennas that can pick up very weak signals coming from smartphones on the ground. He does say, though, that once implemented, and it's going to take a while to get there, uh, these satellites are going to fully emulate a cell tower so that if you're in a dead zone and there's nothing else around, your phone will just connect to that satellite naturally like it was connecting to a cell tower. And what will happen is the phone will hop from one satellite to the next as those satellites orbit overhead at 17,500 miles per hour. As far as frequencies are concerned, it's going to use the existing mid-band frequencies that T-Mobile is authorized to use here in the United States. These are the same frequencies that your phone uses on the ground. But as I mentioned, those satellites are traveling at 17,500 miles per hour, so fast that somebody on the ground with a phone is going to experience a Doppler shift of the frequency as the satellite passes overhead. So they have to adjust for that. Cell phones aren't designed to adjust for Doppler so much, so they'll probably have to adjust the transmitting frequencies on the satellite, and they have to be very careful that the Doppler effect doesn't shift their transmissions into a competitor's frequency band either. So there's a lot to work out here, and Musk actually talked a little bit about that in his presentation. You're not going to be able to do all that much with this initially. They're going to be limited to mostly text messaging and email when it first rolls out. They did say you might be able to do voice communications at a later time, but for the most part, this is going to be texting. It's going to be limited to specific apps that support it because these satellites are likely going to have to store the message and then forward it when the satellite comes back in contact with the ground station. And so SMS is probably going to work, but the apps that are outside of the SMS standard will likely uh, have to be supported individually by their developers. And I don't think Apple is going to support this with iMessage, and we'll talk more about that in a few minutes here. As far as bandwidth is concerned, it's about two to four megabits per cell zone, but Musk made a point to say that a cell zone on a satellite is a much wider area than it would be on the ground. So you're going to have a very large area, probably hundreds of maybe even a thousand miles that will be sharing this bandwidth. So you can imagine you're not going to get all that much going from one of these satellites beyond text messaging and maybe some low bit rate voice communications. Musk says that this is not a substitute for ground cell stations, especially in dense urban environments. And this was a very similar message that he uh, sent out when Starlink was first rolling out its internet service. Now this announcement does not mean you can start connecting to satellites immediately because right now there are no orbiting Starlink satellites that can support mobile phones. And Musk also said during the event that Starlink version 2 satellites are very large and too big to fit in their existing Falcon 9 rocket. So they are waiting for Starship to become operational and that's when they'll start launching these version two satellites because Starship is much larger and can more efficiently launch the volume of satellites that they need to do to make this work from a business standpoint. He did say that if Starship is delayed or they have trouble getting Starship operating, they will come up with a smaller version of the version two satellite that might fit in the Falcon 9, but of course that might result 
in some performance reductions on the smartphones, perhaps. So we'll have to wait and see uh, how Starship develops this year. I was also surprised to hear that they didn't have a backhaul announcement because that seemed to be the more likely scenario here where T-Mobile could set up a tower in a very remote place and instead of running fiber to that tower, they could use Starlink to transport their communications. Uh, the T-Mobile CEO said he was open to the idea at the event, but they hadn't discussed that with SpaceX, at least not yet. And that kind of was surprising given that that would be a real easy win, I think, for both companies to make use of the existing infrastructure to do that versus waiting to get all of these new satellites up in orbit. Now, I was curious as to why they were making this announcement now when things seem to be so preliminary. And the reason might be what Apple is planning to do on September 7th. They've got their big fall iPhone announcement that they do every year. But this year, it's got a space theme. So the invite, which I did not get, but others did, uh, says far out. And it's got a lot of stars with the Apple logo as a constellation. And further evidence to suggest Apple is up to something is that their tweet for this event says, go for launch. And there's been some rumors that we talked about in my last video about Apple making a deal with a company called Global Star to make use of their low Earth orbiting satellites. Now, I know you might be thinking, how is it possible that a smartphone on the ground can communicate with a satellite in orbit without some huge satellite dish? And the answer is that if you're just doing text messaging, it's highly possible to make it work, provided you've got the right antennas where they need to be. And that's why Musk put so much attention on the antenna design for this Starlink version 2 that they announced. In the amateur radio community, we've been sending satellite uh, data packets for quite a while now. And just recently on the International Space Station, they reactivated a data packet repeater and what that does is it listens for data packets coming from the ground. And every time it hears one, it transmits it back out. And the other day, with just this little handheld radio and a smartphone, I was able to get a message to the space station and have it repeated back to me here on the ground using just the rubber duck antenna that you can see attached to the radio. And this was the packet of data that I sent from the ground to the space station. And in this case, I had to have everything pointed exactly where the space station was in the sky, but right when it was overhead, it was able to pick me up. And what I sent up to the station here was just this little line of text, and this is what it sounds like when you transmit it. Uh, so this is a very quick packet of data at 1200 baud, very slow, but it's enough to get a message out. And if you have a store and forward service like Musk is suggesting, I think this could actually be really helpful, especially for people that get stranded somewhere. You can get a message out transmit your exact coordinates using the phone's GPS and have somebody come out and rescue you or at least know where you are if you find yourself lost somewhere with no cell phone coverage. Coincidentally, my video for tomorrow night just happens to be on this topic where I took out a slightly larger antenna that can more reliably reach the space station every time and we used the smartphone to see if we could send text messages with just the phone and the radio. And so we'll prove out this in a little more detail in the next video that I'll be uploading tomorrow night. So that is gonna do it for this look at this announcement. Again, I think this is a reaction to Apple's announcement coming up on September 7th, although I think they were probably working on this together for a while, but it will be a while before any of this stuff is going to be up and running. So in the meantime, if you do wanna send messages through satellites in space, get your amateur radio license and you can start doing it right now and maybe even talk to me through an orbiting satellite. That's gonna do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, Chris Allegretta, Brian Parker, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Baby Metal Fox God, Tom Albrecht, Amda Brown, Matt Zagaya, and Tech Time with Eric. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month.
Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.